Hey everyone, it's Vismaya from Living in Gratitude today, and I have the distinct honor to be speaking with Dan Millman, author of Way of the Peaceful Warrior. And what's the name of your new book? The Life You Were Born to Live. What? Did you hear that? The Life You Were Born to Live. So can you share a, a fast tip to the audience of something? How do, uh, do you practice gratitude? First of all, let me ask you that. Do you have a gratitude practice? Well, actually, uh, I've created a four-minute meditation on the process of dying. And the reason I do that every day, a four-minute meditation, is because I know of no better way to appreciate and get a sense of gratitude for all that we're given in our life. Because in going through the process of dying, we, psychologically speaking, we learn to surrender and relinquish all the things that represent life. And when we finish the meditation, they all come flooding back. Because if we could just fly, if we could wake up one morning and discover we could fly, we'd be ecstatic. But in six months, in seven months, in nine months, we'd be taking it for granted, saying, oh, I wish I could fly faster. You know, I'm late for work. Or it's cold up here. Right. Um, just the same way we take seeing and hearing and tasting and touch and time and emotions and all the things of life, moving, business, doing things, where we have to let go of all that. So I know it sounds paradoxical and it sounds morbid on the process of dying, but once we do that, not only do we lose fear of death, but also we begin to appreciate and feel that gratitude for everything we have right now. No matter, even if we're, even if we're facing difficulties and challenges. So that may not be the answer you might have expected, I but that's the one that came I up. Uh, we had a technical difficulty. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> I love that, you know, because I, I, um, I, I agree that we have to learn to, no, we don't have to do anything, but the more we learn to appreciate what we have, the more we learn to appreciate the little things, we start to notice them more, and then, you know, like you were saying, is that we don't take advantage of them. We, we stay present to them. So I, I... Well, just like we might go home and see a picture on the wall and hardly notice it anymore. Right. When we first put it up, wow, what a beautiful mm -hmm. painting, whatever. But we hardly notice it. And that's why when people travel, they wake up, they get more the eyes of a child because they say, oh, wow, look, a laundromat, you know, in Europe. Yes. It's something exotic. Um, and that's one reason travel is broadening. But when we contemplate what we give up when we die and how limited time we have left. Whatever our beliefs are about what happens after death, that's fine. We can, but we know the body decomposes eventually. And again, most people don't want to think about that. But that really helps us to grasp and enjoy everything we have. And I wake up every morning, I do my meditation, and it's really changed my attitude. It's hard to take anything for granted again. Do you know Jesse Itzler? I don't. So he, his wife is the founder of Spanx, and mm -hmm. one of the things he does is he says the average American has 78 years to live. And so he's about 51, 52 now, so mm -hmm. he looks at his life and he goes, okay, I've got 25 more summers left. I've got, and, and he doesn't do it in a morbid way, but it's the right. same thing. Like, yes. if I have 25 more summers left to live, mm -hmm. how am I going to spend those summers? What am I going to do? How am I going to spend my time? How am I going to enjoy myself? Where am I going to go? What am I going to do? Right. You know, where am I going to visit? If I only have, you know, three times a year left with my parents, I'm going to enjoy them and, and spend the most time with them. So I, right. I think that's really beautiful the way you said that because... When we look at, sometimes we take time for granted. We do. And, and That's the first thing we relinquish in the process of letting go of memory and imagination. Even if our life passes before our eyes, what happens after that? Yeah. So this is what I recommend. I was speaking to an old Zen master and I said, how do I meditate properly? And he said, two things, you must have good posture and then you must die. And I went, what? Now, he didn't mean literally, right. physically, obviously, but psychologically, letting go. And that got me, that got the idea. What is it like? What do we have to let go of? And that led to this fairly radical but effective way to begin to change our attitude toward daily life, so-called ordinary life. I love that. And it reminds us there are no ordinary moments. 
Well, thank you for that. My pleasure. And I got one more favor. Can you give a shout out to my friend Miriam, who absolutely loved your book? She was the one I was telling you that read it um, when she was playing volleyball at UCF. Yes, well, I'll turn right to Miriam. <laughs> Hi, Miriam. And one more to Bonnie. Wish you well. And Bonnie. <laughs> all right. And all the other folks out there. Thank you so much. That was awesome. My pleasure.